coming right there. All right, hey, gents, Carl here with Tactical Rifleman. It is September. Of course, by the time you watch this, it will probably be later, but September is Disaster Preparedness Month. Everybody usually blows it off, but with the upcoming elections and all the rioting and everything else, people are actually talking about preparedness. And we get all these emails, Carl, how much ammo do I need? What kind of gun do I need to get this? How much ammo? How much ammo? Do I need body armor? Do I, guys, I want you to... Relax. You need to be prepared for a disaster. You don't need to go out and defend the cities. You let the law enforcement handle it. That said, rioting and along with natural disasters, for example, hurricanes hitting the coast, um, but even with rioting and um, sabotage, stuff like that, right, because they're burning buildings, who's to say they're not going to start hitting uh, cell phone towers, water treatment plants, things like that. It's very, very possible for that to happen. So um, I, I want to touch today on right, the, the basics of survival, right? Food, water, shelter. Yeah, if you're in the middle of a blizzard, shelter is number one priority. But for all of you at home following the elections when they're rioting and they're burning down the major cities and you're back in suburbia, breathe in, breathe out. All right, you'll be fine, but there are still some things that you need to prepare for. And FEMA's got a great list of basic things that you need to do for preparedness, all right, as far as how much food you should have, how much this, how much that. But I really don't believe that FEMA goes deep enough into it, all right? And uh, so for today, I want to focus on water. Now, not water while you're out camping or water while you're in some apocalypse and you've got to move across the whole United States to get back to your family. Uh, guys, and those are great fictional books. I got that. They're great. But I, let's, let's deal with the here and now and a little more realistic scenario. For example, Katrina, the, it wasn't the hurricane that damaged everything down in New Orleans. It was the breaking of the levee, the flooding, everything else. Uh, rioting and looting, yeah, but the rioting and looting didn't really bother the people, that was people trying to get uh, more stuff for themselves because they hadn't prepared. But one of the major problems that they had was people that were there in their houses, they didn't have the ability to purify water. So how do you purify water? Now, even if you've got water coming out of your faucet, even if water's coming out, who's to say that that is clean water? Right now, I want, for example, let's think Flint, Michigan. Now, they're not even in the middle of a disaster. The rest of the world, we're not in the middle of a disaster. But you, you remember the, the problems they had in Flint, Michigan because of problems with the, the old piping under the city. Now, to them, guys, that was a disaster to them. It was. Now, how do you prevent something like that? Whether you find yourself in a Flint scenario or a Katrina scenario, whatever it is, or somebody sabotaging, Antifa sabotaging your local water treatment plant. Well, I'll just, I'll just uh, drink bottled water. Yeah, good luck with that. Remember all the people that go to the grocery stores the day prior to the hurricane. There's no bottled water to be found. Breathe in, breathe out. I'm going to give you some ways to deal with this. Now, you can boil water, right? Um, if you've got dirty water coming out of the pipe, okay, Dirty, brown, nasty water, fill up a pot, but you still have water. Fill up a pot, you can put it on the stove, all right? Gas stove, electric stove if the electricity's on. But if you have neither gas nor electricity, you can fire up your gas grill outside. You can fire up your charcoal grill. You can make a campfire, put that big spaghetti pot on it and you, with the lid, and you can boil the water. Now, when you go, when you go to purify water, by boiling, you boil for 10 minutes or at least one minute at a rolling boil, all right? Easy stuff. Now, uh, a lot of people try to rely on, well, I'll just chemically treat my water. Okay, now, when would you need to do that? And some people like, uh, well, in an emergency, I'll run my gutters off of my house into a water tank or I've got water in a swimming pool or I've got water in a local creek that I can get. That's fine, but you still need to treat this water. And one of the best ways to do it is chemically. All right now, and, and there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Uh, if you're out camping, for example, or you are 
in that uh, apocalyptic scenario that everybody likes to read about, and you're going wherever, yeah, you carry um, water treatment, right? For example, my get home bag, my red bag of wool that I keep in the vehicle, right? And you guys know it's loaded down with fun stuff, but this whole bag, right? Up top is just stuff for treating water. And I've got, I've got everything in here, guys, um, from extra bags to carry water in to uh, you know, my water filter, drops. I mean, it's literally a whole bag full of just different ways to treat water. Out of all of them, right, you're thinking iodine, chlorine, all this stuff. So my personal favorite is chlorine dioxide. Now, chlorine dioxide works great, but... If you put in, a, if you're using the tablets, you've got to, guys, you've got to wait like, you got to wait like 30 minutes, right? You, you put, you put that drop in there, but then you've still got to, you still got to wait 30 minutes and you're treating it by the quart. You're not doing it by the gallon. Now think about your household. You've got all these people here. You want to keep life as normal as possible. Do you know how often you'd be treating water? Now, remember, you've still got water that comes out of the faucet. Can you convince your family to not drink out of that? Oh, you've got to treat that with chlorine dioxide first, one quart at a time. Oh, and by the way, you've got to wait 30 minutes. See where I'm getting at? They're, they're just not going to want to do that. So you've got, you've got to think about this ahead of time. Now, this is an awesome option. It is awesome option. Chlorine dioxide does not make the water taste like chlorine. Right? Um, and it's mine when I'm traveling on the road. Right? It's in my Jeep. It's in my red bag of woe. I've, I've got all that stuff. Now, if you want to look at filtration, all right, now, um, filtration is the same way. Now, when you think filtering, you've got to get down to, filters are all about the size of uh, the holes in the filter. Right? Now, what, what I mean by that is viruses can go all the way from 0 0.02 microns up to one micron, 0.1 microns. Your bacteria are larger than that. They're from like half a micron uh, all the way up to five microns. And then your biggest stuff, your parasites that get you real sick real fast. Amoebas, ehistolytica, stuff like that. They're anywhere from one to five microns in size. All right, now, um, mine, I, I used to run a life straw. I don't, my, again, my bag uh, that I keep in my red bag of woe, my filter that's inside of it. This one right here, and I, I've got my extra filters taped on the outside. Same one right here, this is my spare. Um, Survivor filter personal, and it gets all the way down to 0 0.05 microns. 0 0.05 microns. There are a few viruses that are smaller than that, but not many. Now, works awesome when you're in the field. Literally, pop off the protective cap, this thing will even screw onto a soda bottle. So you can take an old soda bottle off the side of the road, screw it on uh, after you've filled it up with water. Now, this is great for when I'm on the road, guys. Great for when I'm on the road. Think about this. Are you going to be able to get your family to drink out of these? Hey, kids, I know we've got water running out of the faucet but you can't drink out of it. You've got to put it in a cup and oh, you've got to suck it out of your filter. They're, they're, they're just not going to do it. How about uh, bathing with it? How about cooking with it? What are you going to do? Suck and spit into the pan that you're getting ready to cook your soup in? Because remember, you need water. All these dehydrated rations and stuff that people stock up on, you need water. You need water. So um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Great tool to have for when you're on the road. Mm, not so much for at home. Again, we're thinking at home now. Now, there are, there's a larger one. Again, this made by Survivor Filter. This one's actually battery powered. Runs off of two AA batteries. Uh, this, this is the one I actually keep in my Jeep. And uh, guys, it, it works great. It does. It works great. Hook one hose up here. Hook the other one up right here, sucks water out of the river. You can turn it on and just keep filling bottles. Works okay. This would be a, a good backup. Again, made by same company, Survivor Filter. This is an awesome, I think everybody should have one of these, if not in their vehicle, in their home, because worst case scenario, you could literally do 
uh, gallons of water for cooking, for drinking, right? So I highly recommend this one, right? Again, from Survivor Filter. They're my favorite go-to company. I used to like uh, Sawyer and Survival Straw and Pure. Mm, no, I'm sticking with one company because they got good stuff. Right? Um, that's filters. How about doing large amounts of water? Now, uh, if you talk to FEMA, they'll tell you, uh, you go to the website and they'll show you bleach. They'll, they'll show you, guys, they'll show you bleach. And what they'll tell you is two drops per quart, all right? Okay, so minimum of six, up to 10 drops of bleach to treat a gallon of water. So that this water right here, not out emergency water, not drinking out of a, a, a puddle, water out of your tap when you're not sure if it's clean, FEMA wants you to put uh, anywhere from six to 10 drops of uh, bleach, bleach it, per gallon and then cook with it. I challenge all of you guys to take six drops of bleach and put it into a gallon of water and have your family each drink a just one cup of it. It's gonna taste like pool water to them, number one. Uh, the cool part is then when you say, hey, I wanna spend um, $50, $200, $1,000 on filters and other water stuff for our family, I guarantee you they're gonna nod their heads because they don't want to drink this, guys. They don't. Now, um, the part a lot of people don't know is bleach is only good for so many months and then it, it's got a half-life. And after that, if you're not sure, you've got to double the amount of bleach. So now you're from 12 to 20 drops. Now remember, seven drops of bleach per gallon tastes like pool water. Now you're going to do it with 20 drops of bleach. Oh, and by the way, if you've got scented bleach, you can't use it, all right? Um, what's scenting it? And depending what company... All right, I, you're, you're basically inducing poisons and toxins into your family. What's the difference? Oh, and, and what's the formula for concentrated bleach? You see what I'm getting at? Using bleach. Now, the reason why FEMA recommends that is because every household has this. And nobody thinks about disaster preparedness. Not even in disaster preparedness month. Nobody thinks about it. But when all of a sudden it happens, everybody's going to go to the FEMA website. So the information is there for them to use what's already in their house. Meh. I'm, I'm not going to use it. I just, I don't want to use this. There's better ways. There's better ways to do this. Now, there's another way to do it. There, there is another type of doing it. Now, remember, using any kind of bleach chemical treatment, it does not remove other chemicals that are in the water. It doesn't get heavy metals out. It doesn't get spores out, stuff like that. Uh, but one way that does work is pool shock. You can buy bags of pool shock. I've got a pool in my backyard, so I keep tons of this on hand. Wife doesn't complain about it. Uh, make sure you're getting calcium hypochlorate. Now, it's got to be the good stuff that's 75%. Now, this is granular. Here's why. The liquid stuff does not last long. It just doesn't. The granular stuff lasts long. Now, one thing I want to caution you on is you can't, you can't store this stuff in your house. You can't. I keep mine in a little fold-out uh, cabinet out by the pool. Any tools, gardening tools or anything I put in there immediately get corroded because of the vapor being given off by this thing. I can't smell it, but trust me, it is giving off. Now, why this is so cool is this one little one pound bag, calcium uh, hypochlorite, will treat uh, 10,000 gallons of water. Well, Carl, I would never use that much water. Yes, you wouldn't if you were in one of Tom Clancy's novels and you were doing the apocalyptic have to walk across the US. You wouldn't. You're never going to drink 10,000 gallons of water. Check what your phone bill is, uh, your water bill is right now. How many gallons of water is your family using? Now, I understand you don't need to treat the water that's in your toilets. Even if the water's cut off, you understand you can go scoop water uh, out of the swimming pool, out of the creek, out of the rain barrels. You can fill your toilet and your toilet will work, okay? It's better if you've got septic lines. Understand that if you're on public sewage, 
uh, public sewer system, it could actually back up if the pumps are not pump electrically pumping it away from your house. So just understand that problem's there also. This is multi-tier uh, disaster preparedness here, but so long as you've got a septic system, you can fill the tanks on your toilet with a bucket and you can use your toilets. But what about all of your cooking water, your bathing water, stuff like that? So pool shock, calcium hypochlorite is a great, great, uh, it's a great thing to use, right? To mix it, you're gonna need a five gallon bucket, five gallon bucket, and you don't wanna use a, do not use a plastic bucket. Right? I mean a metal bucket, no metal bucket. You can use a glass five gallon container or you can use a plastic. I just use a regular five gallon bucket. Right? How, you, how you do this is first you've gotta make a stock first. You can't just sprinkle a little, little bit in a five gallon bucket and expect to drink that five gallon bucket. You've got to make what's called a stock first, a bucket of liquid chlorine. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one heaping teaspoon of this and you're gonna add it to 100 parts of water roughly a gallon, all right? Now, you get it in there, you stir it all up, you gotta use a wooden spoon or a plastic spoon, nothing metal. You're gonna let it sit for at least, uh, at least uh, 30 minutes. Now, what you're gonna have is something that smells like bleach. Why? Because it is bleach, all right? It's a, it is literally chlorine, all right? And it's gonna stink, it's gonna burn your eyes and everything, but what you can do is you then add six ounces of that to a to 4.75 gallons of water, not five gallons because the shit would be sloshing all over your kitchen, right? Fill your five gallon bucket up to four and three quarter gallons, pour your six ounces of your calcium hypochlorite slurry in there, six ounces in, and uh, mix it all up. Mix it all up. And uh, basically what you're gonna get is um, 600, 680 ounces of water. Nice, easy stuff. It's good. Now, it, understand, it's still gonna taste a little bit like pool water. Because it is pool water, right? It is pool water. But it's better than you drinking crap water and your family getting sick, All right? So anyways, for bulk water treatment, calcium hypochlorite is, it's an option, guys. It, it really is, but again, I caution people before you go just buying boxes of um, boxes of pool shock. Remember, one of these alone, just one, one does 10,000 gallons of water. Uh, but make sure you're getting the 70%. It says on their active ingredient, 70% calcium hypochlorite. Right? And again, you got to store it outside. That's an option. That's an option. Now, um, me personally, I prefer filters. I do, I prefer filters. Uh, I, I would, I'm going everywhere. I, I've got one of these. I carry it in my carry-on bag. Call it overkill. This is a good filter. Like Again, it gets down to 0 0.0, what is it? 0 .0, 0 0.05 microns. By the way, the, the survivor straw only gets down to 0 0.2 microns, all right? This gets down to 0 0.05 microns, all right? So it, much better filter. Next step up from there in my vehicle or uh, again at home, you, guys, you should have the electric powered one because if you've ever had to pump one in the campsite, I, I, I'm just, I'm not digging it, I'm not. Now, I say I keep that in my Jeep. I keep it in my Jeep. What do I keep in my kitchen? All right guys, now this is called a Royal Berkey water filter. And then they come in all different sizes, they do. Now. Um, it's basically, literally, you take the lid off, and my wife likes it because uh, the stainless matches her appliances in her kitchen, right? And uh, what it's got is two big carbon filters. Now, you'll notice on the bottom, there's actually ports for four. Four is not gonna make your water any cleaner than having two. It'll make the water run faster, but uh, the reason that they are actually there it, and the reason why they're threaded on the bottom also is because you can put fluoride filters on the backside. Some people want to get the fluoride out of the water. Personally, uh, fluoride helps uh, protect my teeth. That's what I was taught when I was a young kid. But literally, you put this on top. You've got your little water spigot on the bottom. Fill this up with a couple gallons of water and you come back an hour later and now all your water's down here. 
You've got your little glass uh, tube to show you how much water is in there. And when you need more, take the lid off, pour another thing in there. Guys, when I fill my uh, coffee makers, when I fill my espresso machines, when I just want a glass of water, when I've got to take my Celebrex and everything else I need for all my bad joints, I get it right here. It sits in my kitchen. I practice what I preach. Guys, this is literally mine from my kitchen. This is not my kitchen. All right, now, here's the other cool part. Let's say you've got great water. You know for a fact, because I live out in the country, you know for a fact where you are at, where you live, you've got great water, some of the best water in the nation. You don't need a Berkey. Okay, but how about when you do need it? Are you going to have time to go order one off of Amazon? Mm, probably not. Probably not. Check this out. This thing flips upside down, lowers right down inside, and you can literally put that thing up in your attic. You can take this camping with you. You can take it on picnics, by the way. When you go camping, you sit it on the end of the picnic table and turn the thing upside down. You can fill this thing up with creek water and you've got good drinking water. Literally, that's what it's designed to do. You go to a lot of the hunting lodges up in the mountains and everything, and you go there and they're running the big, the next larger size Berkey water filter. Literally, they are. I went with this size so it would fit under the cabinet. Literally, guys, it, it works. Now, um, let's say your wife doesn't want a Berkey on her counter or you don't want to mess with it. You may not be there with your family. There's another option that I want to touch on with you guys. And uh, it, uh, again, made by Survivor Filter. This one is called Survivor Filter Pure 10K. 10K. It's a filter, guys, literally. Now, I know you guys have seen these at uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, everything else. It literally, you hook it up male and female ends, you go right underneath your sink and hook it to the cold water. And it's there. You're already ready. You can run this thing. It's good for how many, how many gallons? By the way, it's called the, it's called the Survivor Filter Pure 10K. You're absolutely right. It's good for 10,000 gallons. So every 10,000 gallons, which roughly works out to about three years of you using your sink, by the way, you could run this thing before the disaster happens. Isn't that what disaster preparedness is really about, right? So literally, guys, to, to hook it up, literally, you can see right here, all I did was got underneath here and sat the filter in, hooked the male end to... Uh, Right where your, your water cutoff, your, your cold water cutoff, hook the other end to that hose you just unhooked, and you're done. Literally, you're done. Now, it comes with a bracket so you can mount it, uh, mount it up against the back wall out of the way so your wife has more room to throw crap under the sink. I got that. But it, it's really not needed. Literally, attach one, uh, undo the two, and then hook one here, hook one there, and you're done. You're done. I'm, I'm talking like three minutes. Three minutes, literally, and you're done. You're done. It's a hundred bucks, guys. It's literally. I, I, I want to say they list on the website for right around a hundred dollars. Now, um, if you've got great water, and I hope you do, I, I've got great water. I got great water, anyways. But I use I use a Berkey. I gr I've got great water, but I use these on a couple of our sinks because I'm trying them out. I want to see does it slow my water pressure because that's important when we're cleaning dishes, when we're doing this, when we're doing that. So I've been playing with it. And guys, I love this thing. This box right here, I'm getting ready to tape it back shut and it's gonna go up on the shelf. Because if you've got good water, if you've got good water, you may say, well, I don't, I don't need that. I don't need that right now. You don't, you may not need it right now. Take this, put it with all your ammo, put it with all that stored food that you have. Okay, all your medical gear, everything else. Pure water helps you with your food. Pure, having, right, because you've got to reconstitute that, that food. Pure, clean water helps you prevent, it's part of preventive medicine, keeps you from getting sick. So guys, war, proper water treatment is, uh, should be a big part of your 
disaster preparedness. Again, this is the Survivor Filter Pure 10K. They've got other larger ones, multi-tier, everything else, blah, 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 designed for houses that need it. They do. But for me, look how small that box is when you put it on the shelves, guys. So me, this is what I'm going to recommend for you guys to go. I love my Berkey because I can take it camping with me. I love my battery-powered one to keep in my vehicle. You guys know I love my Survivor Straw, but uh, the Survivor Filter Pure 10K, that's what's going under the sink. That's what's going up on the shelf in case I need it. Got a lifetime guarantee. Yeah, it'll last for three years, but if you leave the box, put it up on the shelf, and you don't have to hook it up for five years, don't have to hook it up for 10 years, it'll always be there waiting for you, and that's what uh, being prepared means having this stuff ahead of time before you need it. Anyways, that's all I got for this week on Tactical Rifleman Disaster Preparedness Month. Let's prepare for the upcoming jackassery that the elections are going to bring. Uh, Y'all take care, and I'll see you next time. Shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.